All right, so here's the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and open her up and see how she does. Uh, the other thing is, whoop. I want to apologize in advance for the crappy audio. Most of this was shot in the trunk of my car with my cell phone. So it's just to show you guys around and hopefully help. It's not like I have a ton of chances to do the repair, but maybe it'll help somebody out there uh, seeing what it looks like. To repair the planetary gear on a G37 hardtop convertible. So I've got it all apart right now. Actually, I've done this side already, and I just don't have the... Uh, the cover back on because I'm actually going to do the other side. But I did this side and it took a lot longer than I was expecting. But in the process, I was able to figure out a way to do it much cleaner and without removing bolts and uh, without having to reset the top or anything. So um, uh, you can see where some of the rivets are that I've replaced. There's one and the others are kind of, there's one right there. And uh, what I'll do is I'll try and go through each and every one of them. To show you the hardest one to actually take apart was uh, what is it? Is this one right there? And it's also going to be the hardest one to put back together, but it's actually not that big of a deal. So, the first one you want to you want to take apart to do anything on this side is actually taking out the motor. So. I'll go ahead and uh, see if I can do that. And I'll show you why. Adjust the camera here. There we go. So once you get the motor out, you can actually manually um, turn the flap, or you can actually turn this, drop the flap to get at the other parts that you need to get access to. So, well, it's the easiest thing to do. So. It's a T25. So you can see I've got the two screws out, and it only really goes back in one way. Um, but take the motor out and remove that and get that out of the way. Just by a nice little tug on it, gentle. And then we'll remove these clips. Pretty much just that off. You can see how the motor 
saying. And I'm just going to take it off to get it out of the way. I just use a little screw, flathead screwdriver to nudge it, but put that there. And at that point, first screw we want to, the first rivet we want to drill out. At this point, the first rivet we want to drill out is over here. So this is the rivet that we're going to drill out right here. Yeah. The trick to drilling out rivets is just have a drill slightly bigger than the hole. So the trick to drilling these rivets out, or any rivets, if you haven't done it before, I would certainly watch some videos on it, but you want to have a drill just that'll sit in the hole, and it'll be slightly bigger so you can drill out the aluminum. And you want to go slow. You don't have to hurry on this. And I'm even going to shoot a little WD-40 on the end. I don't dull my bit. Voila. So you can see it comes right off. And once that's done, I'll show you. There's the end of the rivet. And get it in there for you. So you can see I didn't trash the hole. I'll deal with the rest of that in a minute. But once you get the rivet out, this cover will come right off. Just a little, little yank. And you got these tabs on here. So just watch them gentle pulling it out. Now, what you can do
because we'll clean this up in a minute, but let's see if I can get the flapper to move a little bit. So what I'm doing is I literally just took an electric drill and put it on the end of that spring. And it's kind of hard to do this with two hands, but check it out. See the flapper moving up and down so I can access the other rivets. So I'm going to put this down a little bit, but not too far. All I did was just put the end of the electric drill in there and gently uh, turned it. So, now let's see what we have access to under here. So, there's two rivets. On the assembly. And let me see if I can get a little closer. There's one there. And one right here. I should take some pictures. One right there, and one right there. Those two rivets. That's what it looks like with the assembly. Let me slowly back out. You zoom in. I'm going to drill those two out next. Let's make sure it's in focus. One. And basically, I'm going to take the same approach, just do some gentle drilling. Again, you don't have to rush. It'll eventually just pop off. Just be careful of the wiring. flap just a little bit more to make some more room. Probably do it by hand. Let's see if I can do it by hand. There we go. So I'm just turning this by hand. Get it out of the way now. So you can see I'm just going after this one on the inside here. Alright, so um I got him out. Uh Took me a little finagling how to move the camera out of the way, but biggest thing I can't reinforce enough is to just go slow. So, and I'm actually going to use this as a punch. I'm going to use this a little bit later. But you can see there's one hole right there. 
And I'll back right off one there. And one under there. And the rivet's still part way in there, and I'll take care of that in a little bit. But we're going to get the back two by rolling the flapper back up. I'm going to do exactly what I did before. And I would advise you when you are manipulating the, the, the finisher to um, maybe put PVC or something to hold the chunk just so you don't have to put pressure on it. Um, I'm all right where I'm at, but in case you don't have a strong rod, you don't want to snap that finisher for that reason. That's it. And then we're just going to finish her coming up with it. And I just brought it up as close as I get, so you can see. And now, what we're going to do, I'm going to take the last two rivets out. So we're got three rivets right here. And there's one, there's two, and that will release the whole system. So I'm not even here. Let me get a plug action and put some better light on it. Maybe that helps a little bit. I don't know. But uh we've got a rivet here and here. And those two need to come out and then the whole Assembly will drop down and then we'll we'll repair it. So Move this light a little bit. Let's see if we can get better lighting. There we go. And trust the drill bit. Just like that. That's one. Now the other one is right by this wire. So be really, really careful. Sensor wire. Actually, it'll unhook. There's a little hook thing. If you unhook it, you can hold it out of the way. A tad bit. But you don't need to pull it off. on here. this point you'll want to slide the spring out so slide that out of the way a little bit I think I got them all let's find out Love here gently. Once that's out, the whole unit is loose and you can move fast. I'm gonna 
Slide the camera back a little bit. So I had a little bit of a fight with this clip right here. This connector and the connector to the power, uh, to the sensors, I should say, rather. So you got two connectors on here. They're self-explanatory, but the one that is stuck to the trunk side goes on like this, and it just slides off. You just push forward on it if you can, and it should slide right off. And there's still the clip in there. So I'll uh, see if I can... Get the other light on. There we go. That that little clip right there. But otherwise, the assembly is off, and it's in one piece, and no damage. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do before I take the flapper off is, I'm going to use a punch, maybe drill them out a little bit more. But you can see the remaining bits of the rivets are still there. So I'm going to pop those out with a little hole punch if I can. I may have to drill them uh, or just tap them out. We'll see what happens. I'll, uh, I'll let you know, but I'm not going to bother filming that. But you can see them. So their remnants are there, but the part is off. So I'll be back in a second. All right, so just a, a quick, uh, I guess, word to the wise or a little advice on uh, really the hardest part is drilling out the rivets. But if you look at the assembly, you can see the holes. There's one, two, three, four. And then the fifth one is actually on uh, the car for the plastic cover. But did no damage, no damage to the uh, the connectors or anything like that. So just uh, if you don't know how to drill rivets out, uh, again, I'm going to tell you to um, uh, to maybe watch a video on that. But the trick is to just go nice and slow. And then if you spin a rivet, you can usually just push a screwdriver or something against it just to put a little leverage on it. And it was a little harder for me to do it and try to film the video at the same time. But... Um, it's worth it to take your sweet time doing that because once you've got it off, that, that's the hard part. The rest is really easy. So you're going to need a couple of things uh, in order to, to do this part of taking it apart. And again, the, the goal is to just be as minimal uh, invasive as possible. Uh, pull the rod out. That's that spring that connects to the motor and connects to uh, the, the, uh, the housing. Uh, and the reason for that is because you can use this to manipulate the uh, gearbox. Um, the other thing I'll point out, because I kind of looked at it at first, and I was like, what's with all the dirt? This isn't dirt. It's actually felt so that it's not uh, rusting in there, and it's nice and quiet when it opens and closes. So don't bend this. Be really, really careful of it, uh, because I have no idea how much a new one costs. But what we can do to get at the pins is we can actually twist. Tw Twist the rod. Here, I'll bring the camera up a little bit more. I'll try and keep my view, but um, you could use this to manually uh, slowly move it so we can get at the pins to separate uh, the gearbox. So it's really easy to do. Um, but uh, the other thing uh, before I get started is uh, I want to talk about these. So these are. Uh, the gears from Guy Menard, and I'll tell you what, um, he just did an amazing job. I'm actually doing the driver's side uh, as sort of a preventative measure, so I can butt the car back up. I didn't want to take it all apart twice or wait for it to break, but this was my passenger side gear, and uh, Guy was fantastic. I'll put his contact info in on the body of the video, I'll, you know, his email address or whatever. 
Uh, but he is literally the man for, for reverse engineering this because this thing is a piece of crap. It was designed to break. You can see the break right here on the gear. And uh, everything else is metal. It makes no sense whatsoever why this was designed this way. But to replace an assembly, you're looking at about $1,800. So uh, he has uh, just incredibly reasonable prices. This is not 3D printed. This is actually straight up real deal from a machine shop. And uh, I'll show you the parts inside and why uh, you can just, it, it's so frustrating that that particular piece is really the single point of failure on, the, on these tops. Uh, they're beautiful cars. There was so much effort into the design of them, but they put a plastic gear in, which is the dumbest thing in the world. So this thing, uh, again, I got it from Guy Menard. He's, uh, you'll see him on some of the groups uh, uh, on either Facebook or on the G37 forums uh, for the, the convertibles. And uh, mine's a, a, a 20, uh, 2013 uh, G37S, and uh, it works perfect. I, like I said, I already did the other side. So big shout out to him. He's absolutely the man. It is worth every penny uh, if you need to replace one of these. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get right in it. And uh, let's see if I can uh, do this pretty quickly. Uh, just got to turn around and see where the pins are. Open it up. There's basically four pins in here. And there's the top two. So I think I'm going to take the top two out first. And so the way they, they go, so I'm going to make sure this is in view. Um, lower the camera back down a little bit. Um, all you need is like a little tiny screwdriver or uh, just something to fit in there and gently press them out. And you're going to press them out. from the metal side. So I'm going to show you here. If you look at these, and again, I'm just trying to show because most of the videos, there's a little sort of clip, like a pressure lock in there. And let's see if I can get it adjust a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push these back in gently, just like that. I'm going to do one. And then I'll do two. And I'll show you what they look like when they're popped out. Let me get to it. There we go. All right. So you can see them. There's, they're, they're right here. So I went from there and just pushed them that way. And then you may have some stuff in the way that you might have to manipulate a little bit. But let's see if we can get it apart. By re with that release there and then do the other side probably did this backwards but if I did I'll fix it at the end of the video <clears throat> So all I'm doing is just rolling this so that it goes, um, gives me a little bit more room to expand them and get those pins out. And let's see if I can get at them. the right size but okay it is all right what I'm using here is a Torx T30 so, so you have to rotate it to get these screws out 
be a part of the assembly of heart to get at those pins to get those all the way out. So, take one, and then the other is on the back side right here. So, let's see if we can do this while I'm holding it. There we go. All right, and now I should be able to remove a little bit of the frame. Let's take me a minute, so bear with me here. Let's see if I can get this popped. So once you take those screws out, this part of the frame will, will will release and just move that a little bit back out of the way, whatever way you can. Um, it only goes on one way, so just be gentle with it because you're going to have wires connected to it. There we go. So you see how I've got it moved out of the way now? That's all. Well, she wrote right there. And then... I can get the rest of the assembly apart. It'll just take me a second here. Let me take one pin out. All right, and uh, this is what these little pins look like. Be really careful with them. They're plastic. They're hard to find. So if, uh, you know, when you're taking it out, just go slow and make sure you don't have a lot of uh, force on them. So that's one. Let's get the other one out of here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take it out with a little needle nose and just get a little tug on it. And uh, oh, got the other side of the assembly off. So, got two of them. And take your time because, you know, even though this assembly's off, it's got the sensors on it little stop sensors and then we'll put that back together in a minute uh, if you want to take a picture of it you by all means do that but once you have the frame off then the rest of these pins will be easy to get out and just a little, little nudge on them one i mean i don't think you even need to take them all the way out if you can get them apart but i i like to Be gentle on them. And then number four. Move that out of the way. Number four is going to be on this side. So. Let's see if I can do that in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, just a little, little push on the front metal side. And then they'll stick out the back like that. And then you just pull them out with it. Yeah, you know, gently pull them out with a needle nose. Those are the two crappiest pliers I have. I should have got another set. Just gonna go grab another one. <laughs> All right, there we go. So, again, I'm just gonna do a little, little tug on that, nice and gentle.
and that will come right out just like that. So once you have the four pins, all that's left are these two clips, one here and one there. So I'm going to leave. I'm not going to adjust the 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 bear, the, the gear housing back uh, until I put it back together. Just it's a little easier that way. But if you think you need to, feel free. But just lift those clips gently. You break those, you're screwed. And uh, at that point. Just take your little screwdriver and slowly work it apart. Like so. Slowly work it all the way around. Just gently start to peel it away. See, it's coming apart. But again, the trick is just work nice and slow and easy. Don't force anything. And voila. So there's your worm gear. There's that shitty gear. And then inside of there, inside of this piece, this is actually still got, looks like some decent grease. Uh, and then underneath this are the rest of the planetary gears. So, and actually this one looks like it's in good shape. But again, it's plastic. So, you know, you can see it. I mean, it's just a matter of time. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pitch this and just show you how this fits right in. It simply slides on. Now I'm going to clean this up, but that's it. That's all there is to it. And it looks beautiful. So I'm actually going to clean all this out with the, uh, with some brake um, cleaner. And then I'm going to repack it with some of the lithium grease. Um, I don't know if there's any particular kind, but I know lithium is fairly safe for stuff. So, but this is the stuff I'm using. I'd imagine you can use anything you want. And uh, that's what it looks like. Um, because it's not like a high heat part or anything like that. So I'm just cleaning it to clean up the debris. So I'm going to use brake cleaner on this. And just blast the hell out of it and then put it back together. Uh, so we'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to clean them up. I'll show you the cleanup parts and then we'll pack the grease together. Okay, so we're back. I've cleaned out uh, as much as I can get out of the gearbox and the worm gear as far as the grease goes. And so I'll just show you these real quick so you can see what they look like. There's a little bit of play in there because um, the uh, planetary gear is not in there. But um, I just hit it with, I actually took the bulk of the grease out that I could get with a Q-tip. Uh, and then after that, I just blasted it with a can of um, uh, brake cleaner. So <clears throat> then once you're done with that, uh, just let it dry off. I hit it with a hair dryer for like a, a half a minute just to vaporize all the stuff so I can, uh, didn't have to wait all day. So the rest is uh, pretty simple. We're just going to, we're going to pack this guy. Now we're going to put the gear on top of that. And again, it just goes in like this. There's just not much to it. Oops, just goes in. And there you go. So let's pack that up. And uh, like I said, I'm going to use my super high-tech grease here. And uh, 
and my fancy uh, butter knife. And I'm just going to put a little bit in at a time and a healthy dose of it. out and I'm not too super concerned about any excess because grease is good just pack it in there so that it gets on the gears and around as best you can And put the planetary gear on top there, let that slide in, and move it around a little bit just to spread some of that grease. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grease up the, uh, the worm gear a little bit. Pack that in really good. I know I've got some on there, but I'm just going to kind of adjust this best I can. Just to get some on it. Grease is good, right? I don't want to be pulling this thing apart again. And I'm finding out that something failed from lack of grease. So, just put it on right there. And at that point, we're ready for reassembly. And uh, it's not much to it. Just gently put it back together. Try to line up the four tabs, those four little nub things into these four holes first. And they're probably gonna be a little, a little iffy. So just be, again, you know, in the spirit of being gentle with everything. Push. Looks like I'm gonna grab a paper towel to clean up that excess grease. Dandy paper plate for guts catching. And then you can test it. Simply by putting the the spring in. I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm gonna put my pins back in. Clips down again. Be gentle with these clips. If you break them, you're well. You know what? I'm gonna do them from the back. So back, just press them in till they're flush, and I'm gonna do that a little better in a second. Just to get them in there, and then hopefully you can see this. Line up the holes. Greasy fingers. So, of course, it's going to be a little more challenging.
I think there's like a rounded edge. It's, no, maybe not. I don't know. Thought one of these was maybe rounded, but I could be wrong. Let's see if I can get this one in through the back too. Now it might take a little finesse, but once you get them started, they go right in. I'm just going to get them all started first. There we go. And then my last one. I'm trying to see if they're rounded. Uh, sure doesn't look like it. Get a little. No. Anyway. Let's see if I get this last one in here. There's always one. Pliers. Just gotta be gentle. I don't want to crimp this. There we go. So, and then I'm just going to press those to ensure they're flush with the tip of the needle nose. One, two, maybe a little feel on there. Three, and four. So, all four of those pins are in now. The assembly's pretty much back to normal. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what direction this, should this be to put those brackets on? Well, the bracket only goes on one way, but this is the driver's side finisher. So if I flip it the way it, it would be tucked under the trunk and I wanted to make sure it was going the right direction, this spring is towards the back. So in its closed position, it's like this. So, I've got those um, screws out that I got to put back in. So let's see if we can get this hardware back on. What, too much of a nightmare. So. So the big hole is the back side. Again, I'm just being gentle here because I don't want to break any wires. But you can see the holes line will line right up. So that's why I want to do this side first. And I might get to one actually. Let's try this side first. Okay, so that's one side on. And you can tell it's on right because the screw, screw holes line up. Well, they will line up for the bolts for this side. So let's do this side. The way this goes on, if I can get it to go. It's under. There's a little lip here on this side. This goes under the front bracket or the inside bracket. So once you've kind of fidgeted on, it'll stay in place and then you just need to put your bolts in. But you can see it went right back together. So hopefully I'm giving you guys enough angles here so you can see that way in case you lose, <laughs> you mix it up. Because it does happen. I get it. But uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and put our T30s back in. I'm just going to start this side. T30s. Hopefully you can see that. Nice little push to get that started. 
I'm gonna start the other side because I've always learned to try and do things balanced. I'll go ahead and put that in there. I'm trying to hold this so you guys can see. There are pros and cons to magnetic tools. And then that one will just go right in there. And again, we'll get that started. Do a light torque on that. Do the back side. There we go. And then once all right, and I'm just gonna put a little little torque on it, but not a ton. I wouldn't crank it down if I were you. Because I'm not cranking it down, me being me. And again, I'm just a little snug. And your assembly's back together with its new gear. And then um, we'll uh, we'll go outside and we'll we'll put this back together in the morning. But you can test it just by turning the screw, and you can see it's moving. Here, I'll just do it all the way so you can see. So, but we'll talk about uh, putting it back together uh, in a few minutes. So there you go. There's your rebuilt um, flapper slash finisher uh, for a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of time. It's rebuilt. All we have to do is put it back in um, and you're $1,800 less per side. Um, so, all right, we'll catch you in a minute when we're putting it back together. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the assembly back in, and uh, we're going to rivet it in place uh, like the rivets we pulled out. So I'm going to kind of start with what I elected to use for a rivet gun, is I picked up one of these. Uh, it's an arrow uh, rivet kit. Uh, I think it was like 20 or 30 bucks, but it included uh, a couple of packs of rivets, so I didn't have to go hunting around. But um, what makes this... This rivet kit so unique is that this is the rivet gun, but what you can do is you can twist the head around so that you can easily get up into most of the area. It's a little bit better so I don't have to disassemble as much um, uh, when, when putting the assembly back in. It allows me to put a lot of pressure against it to really get the rivet in place. So again... Uh, like I said, just the cool thing is it has the adjustable head so I can get a better, uh, better angle on it. So I wanted to do a, a quick supplemental video here just to add in. Um, the rivets that I use were the 316 5mm uh, by half inch or 12mm length uh, just so they get a better bite in there. Um, but these are, these are a little bit longer than the, the little ones that come with the kit. So these are the ones you're going to want to use. So those are the first two things I want to talk about. And then the second thing I want to talk about is adjusting, once you've got your assembly back together, is adjusting the, um, uh, the planetary gear and bracket so that, um, it's a little bit easier to put in place. So I'm just going to kind of set this up here so you can see it. Um, it's actually, it goes like this. Um, there we go. Yeah, it goes like this. And so if you can see, you really want to adjust it a little bit so that you can actually put it in place and hold it. So again, you can take your handy dandy. Um, spring. And, and just turn it a little bit until you get it at the right angle so that you can push it up there. And then just dry fit it in place. So, you can see here, I'm gently, still not there. I'm going to give myself a little bit more, more room. I like, 
want a little bit more of an angle on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this down just a little more so it's not pushing against the rear window deck. There we go. Let's see, that should probably do it. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and come in here and gently work it into place so I can see where I'm at. I see that all the holes line up. And they go. So I'm happy with the dry fit. And I'm going to gently take this out for a second and prep up my rivet. And really, all we need to do is get a couple of these in place. Once we do that, it'll be fine. So. Take the rivet, put it in the gun, press it all the way down, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. There we go. All right. So we've got our, our dry fitting in. The wires are still dangling. We're going to go ahead and do a little manipulation in here. And I feel like that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and force my first one in. first one's in, then you can put a second one in, and I'm hoping that I, I'm oh, probably not even close, let's adjust this a little bit, back it up, there we go. The only other thing I recommend before I get going, I should have done this earlier, pull that tube out a little bit where the spring slides into, just to make sure that it doesn't block, doesn't block the housing. And uh, I'm actually going to dip this down a tad bit. Adjustments here. Here, so I'm adjusting the flap down so I can get the riveter in. Well, that's going to be the same thing, so I'm going to go right in here. Get a big press. And 
that one's in place. So I got two of them in place. Number three, this is going to be the, that uh, third hole on the frame. Right here. That's up against that wire ring, so again, you want to be careful with that sensor wire. See, I didn't keep enough pressure on it. It's gonna happen. Yeah, I think this happened a couple of times in the last one. Let me try it again. I think we can get a last one. And then you wanna you don't wanna reroute the wires the way they were before. So have this plug. Plug that back in. And then this side went through. The tube, zip it in there so you can see. So you see that's back in. The tube is in place. And uh, I might spin the tube a little bit just to make sure it's set. Let's see if I can get you. home position. So I'm, I'm lifting on the, uh, the flapper while I'm turning it. So show you a little handsy here. So I'm 
actually even just alleviating some of the pressure off of it for now. While I just manually turn it by hand. We had it back up into its home position. Snug it right in. So there we go. Well, at this point, I'm ready to put the motor back in. So on the motor, if you take a look, you can actually see where the the threaded um, holes are. So in this case, it's this one and this one. And I can see the threads in there. And there we go, a little manual twist. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, reassemble a couple of things. So this is the motor side. Just clicks in place. Just slides into place. And then up here, so there's the motor back in place. These two connect, but I've got to slide it on this connector first. So it's a bit of a hot mess. So the way it goes is I actually shouldn't have pulled this out. I'm gonna pull it off here first real quick. Get an extra inch or so. just show you what's going on here if you look at it the slot goes in this end into this guy right here I can't do it and hold the camera at the same time I gotta give a little stretch but so they do this without breaking it that I can get an extra couple of inches if I can take this thing out so it's coming out. So yeah, it's connected to the other sensor. Let's we'll see if that does the trick for me. All I need is about a millimeter. Woohoo! There you go. So I just disconnected this right here, and I'm just gonna plug it back in. And I disconnected this one back here, but and this is the housing. There's a little. Like that, and then at that point, this goes in here. That's going to click into place, and then we're 
on to putting the motor back. So, not much to that. Let's see if I can get a little bit of room here. Show you. Not much to it. So I just check, make sure it's all the way in. Where it should be. And on the motor side, just put it on gently like this. Get a little twist like this just to make sure it's in place. I'm going to slowly work it back into the hole. Should line up fairly well. Let's make sure that my right holes. Yeah, I need to see what the top there. See? I'm trying not to get too rough on it. started. And I started. And again, it's a 25 for these two screws. And, uh, A little bit of an effort getting started. All right, so I've got the screws in. That was a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, took about maybe five minutes because, again, I'm taking my time with everything. Uh, but what we're going to do now is I'm just going to slide the camera back a little bit. Adjust it. Is I'm just going to expect everything with a flashlight just to make sure that everything looks good. And I just want to check and make sure all my wires are out of the way or back where they're supposed to be. So I got one right here, a little nub thing. Put that in there. And just like make sure everything looks nice and tight and tidy. And I've got that one last screw or that one last rivet hole, just so you know. Um, when this cover goes on. When this cover goes back on, there's a hole here that I'm going to probably just wind up putting like a, I don't know, maybe a small short sheet metal screw or something through because it's got a bracket on the back side of it. So it's this one screw right here. That, or that one rivet hole right there. That's the last one. I'm not going to, I'm not going to put the cover on now and I'm going to save that for later. But like I said, you can kind of figure out what to do with it. Um, 
but I want to check the top. Everything looks good. As far as I can tell, fingers crossed. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, let's do that in a second here. I'm going to clean up uh, the trunk and put everything in the way it's supposed to be. All right, so this is the moment of truth. Go ahead and hit the open button. is up. You hear the rivets rolling around in there. At some point I'll try and get those out. There you go, that's how to rebuild your flapper without having to reset the trunk and do all the extra work. Uh, just take your time with it, and like I said, the biggest, I can't emphasize this enough, the biggest pain in the, the backside is actually getting those rivets out. But everything else, just take your sweet time with it. And hopefully this video helps uh, a few of you out there. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching, and if this video helped you out, I'd appreciate you smashing that like and subscribe button.